You're listening to the Casting Shadows podcast, an extension of the Casting Shadows blog at castingshadowsblog.com. And for a written record, more or less, of this episode, you can find the details there. It's also an extension of the Runeslinger YouTube channel, where videos on this topic are likely to appear, but only after play and of play. Anyway, let's get into it. It has taken a little longer than I would have expected when I committed to the pre-order for the Alien role-playing game from Free League to actually get to the point where we are playing it. Long, long ago, I expected to get this to the table, but we're having a lot of fun with a lot of other games. So, while we haven't switched to this one yet, we are about to. And this episode, and a few which will follow, are going to walk through some aspects of preparation that don't get discussed very often or get discussed a little differently. So I hope you'll join me for this exploration about preparation to play Alien. In space, no one can find the page. There are some who have grown sensitive to tropes, to the definition of genre expectations, and the notion that there can be free coloring within the lines of a recognized intellectual property. Well, that's fine. That's just preference. I have my own preferences. There are those, like myself and the members of the group I play with, who are not sensitive to these things. That stuff doesn't matter. But, not only are we not sensitive to them, we embrace them. This is where choice comes in. In point of fact, we not only embrace them, we recognize that just like genre is rule zero, that those constraints are going to be there anyway. So the choice we made is not to have or not have them. It's to lean into them by choosing to recognize them or to remain ignorant of them or unconcerned by them and so risk being tripped up by them. If this is the first time you've heard the expression genres rule zero, well, I'm certainly not surprised. It's one of mine. If you'd like to know what I mean by it, let me know. Ask, and I'll be happy to share my thoughts and engage with you on what it means and how it might apply to you and others. Or how it's just pure madness. (laughs) Getting on the same page is often the phrase used in this kind of situation, getting people on the same page, or a session zero. And it's been used often enough historically that it's begun to generate some resistance. People don't want to get on the same page anymore. They don't have resistance to the idea of getting into agreement, but they do resist the idea of being constrained. Constrained is somehow a bad thing. Of course, Being on the same page is not about signing a contract or other binding document that controls your actions, but it is about understanding what we are doing. How can that be a bad thing? Unless your intention is to be optimistically or pessimistically or in some other way disruptive for some agenda other than being a functional part of a functioning group. How is this relevant to the alien RPG? Well, easy. There's a lot of media in that franchise now, and there are a lot of elements to the intellectual property, and there are 
individual comics and films, etc., that strike people hard in their preferences. And like Star Wars, taking a moment to have a clear vision of what our group in this campaign, this time, will call Alien is helpful. It reduces wasted time. It reduces the chance for later dissatisfaction. And it helps to focus the starting point for play and so allow for meaningful interactions from the beginning and other things. One thing that the Alien RPG does incredibly well is making this process easier. And for details about some of this, please consider listening to an interview with Andrew E.C. Gaska by Craig Shipman of the Third Floor Wars podcast, the Tabletop Talk podcast by Third Floor Wars. So, Gaska is the setting writer and the alien continuity consultant. How he made the process easier for people to pick up alien and make their decisions about what is and isn't alien is a high point of that particular podcast episode. In addition to the open way that Gaska approaches presenting continuity elements from the seemingly very disparate canonical elements of the Alien franchise, the presentation of the game has a brevity and modularity to it that makes it easy to digest and easy to manage in preparation or conversation about the game prior to play. Now, as an aside, it's not the easiest PDF to use, and so I definitely prefer using the book but between it and the Colonial Marines sourcebook, some of the layout choices are a bit challenging. However, the actual organization of information, regardless of how it looks visually, is quite easy to use. So, what am I talking about when I talk about managing what is alien? I'm talking about things like choosing starting dates. What, what era are you playing in? Choosing a tone. The movies all have different tones. Choose one. Understanding the desired genre. Determining which films or other media in the franchise were strong draws for the group as a whole or strong turnoffs for the group as a whole. I'm not talking about spoiling the campaign before you play it. I'm not talking about getting permission to do things. And I'm not talking about not having surprises. In space, no one can hear you consent. This section will be exactly like the previous section. <laughs> Before play of a game, with what ad copywriters love to call mature themes, and after you as the GM know what you want to do with that game, in full recognition of things you have done in other horror games that you felt were either going too far or not going far enough, it's time to figure out how to describe the sort of horror you are going for, what that might mean in terms of discoveries that characters might make and experiences that characters might have, and compare all of that to the group you are intending to run that game with. Is there anything that you want to do that you already know is a problem for one of your friends? If so, how do you feel about that? Which is more important? Getting this creative desire into play? Or gaming with your friend? If you are unsure, then it is probably time for a talk, right? Maybe at a pre-launch session or at some other convenient time before the group is building momentum to play. This is gaming with conscience, and it is the build-up to the usual and understood gaining of consensus about what we are going to play. And this might be an open and explicit process in your group, or it might be one that you have no idea takes place. But it does. It can be boiled down to even this, this one common exchange. One person in the group says, Hey, do you want to play a supers game? And the next person in the group says, No, how about... That is all we're talking about. One of your buddies might be tired of horror games, or might be tired of science fiction, or might be frustrated that there isn't enough science fiction in the group and doesn't want to filter it through horror. One of them might be working through a sensitive situation, such as after the death of a loved one, and their usual love of violence and mayhem is currently 
unavailable to them and so not available to the group at this time. And if we're not sure about how they might be feeling about this kind of thing, isn't that a strong hint that there might be reason to talk? This isn't about getting permission, like I said before. That's a whole other kettle of facehuggers. This is about being a human being and a friend. If you're the sort that plays with strangers, you cannot possibly know what might count as a problem for people you do not know. Especially if you don't even know who will be playing until the game starts. It's in this kind of <laughs> social separation situation that the process of playing with conscience and consensus gets complicated and starts causing problems. Is this play with strangers also in public? Do you know the guidelines of the public place or event in which you intend to play with people you don't know? Are there age limits? Are those age limits enforced? Can you tell by looking if a person is the right age on site, or do you just think you can? Are you willing to err on the side of keeping your big reveal of horror a secret, or are you willing to err on the side of not causing a scene with a stranger in public? These questions are just the tip of that particular iceberg, and if they seem like a big bag of no fun, it might be more appropriate to consider playing something else if you have to or want to play in public with strangers. In space, no one can hear the rules. In our group, we like to learn as we go and allow for the learning process to be a part of play. That said, we do like to prepare some rules understanding before we play. Much of this is focused on things we know get applied incorrectly or that give other groups trouble. But a large amount is focused on how rules will be applied and or rulings made if necessary. We like to explicitly state how the rules connect to the genre, and in cases where we are playing a licensed property, like Alien, how Scene X in Movie Y demonstrates the concepts that the rules are trying to help our play produce. Actually, I get a lot of fun out of doing that. So, right now, as I speak, one keen and intelligent member of the group is preparing a cheat sheet for fast fact-checking in play. I am rereading the rules and putting myself in mental drill situations where each set of roles and other rules elements could ostensibly come into use. Everyone has been watching the films that matter to us for our consensual understanding of Alien this time, which means we're watching the first film and the second film, sometimes multiple times, and already the quotes are thick in conversation. <laughs> We're in the process of tying down what pushing roles. If you're not familiar with the Year Zero system from Free League, uh, that will come up in future episodes on this topic. But, of course, there's a quick start available of their various games, and uh, you can get an idea of it there. We are in the process of tying down what pushing roles means and what it means to description in the context of the characters we're making and what that in turn means to the panic that is likely to ensue later. We have already worked out the chain of command and we're about to review our thoughts on chains of command in roleplay. We're also in the process of building alternate characters for the possibility of troop play and for any deaths which might occur. We want a sense of a larger group of colleagues and acquaintances around the starting characters. We want to be able to view the ongoing situations from a personal perspective informed by a broad base of player knowledge about the setting, which includes these other characters. We also want to minimize times when a player is not involved in play. We don't have long to play, and it's a sacrifice of some sort for each player to make each of our sessions. And as we go toward the end of the year, our sessions are going to stop being two hours long and become 90 minutes long. So there's really no time to let someone wait to play. Throughout this preparation cycle, we've been building on our ongoing discussion of games, game mechanisms, genre, tone, atmosphere, description, characterization, preferences, biases, and so on. We give and receive feedback. In space... No plan survives contact with the vacuum.
As the GM, I've been working in my usual way and in acknowledgement of the campaign rules presented in Alien. I want to experience the game as written as best as I can, and I want to be prepared for and have a decision for any aspects of it which clash with what I'm able to do well as a GM and with what I will enjoy doing as a GM. Usually, I can find a way into a game so that I can play it raw, and so far I think that will continue with this game. Part of it was in working out how often to call for roles, what situations are worth rolling for, for these characters, and what balance of the action of aliens and the horror of alien will be enjoyable and infectious for the players. Coming from me. We all influence play. This group of players under this player as the game master, what does that feel like, is sometimes quite different from if we move the game master chair one person over. <laughs> In space, these dramatic headers might be misleading. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this episode. And if you have your own experiences with Alien, the role-playing game from Free League, please feel free to share them in a voice message or however else uh, you choose to contact me. There will be more in this series sporadically as we move toward our first play date of, not this Saturday, this is Saturday the 4th that's coming, the following Saturday. Anyway, until then, take care. The next installment in this series on Alien, the role-playing game, will be about character creation and how that influences preparation in the game, and how the two main modes of play, cinematic mode and campaign mode, are so important to how play actually takes shape and therefore what kind of preparation you will do, have to do, and maybe should avoid. You've been listening to the Casting Shadows podcast, hopefully available where all other podcasts are available.